Hello hackers, welcome to Pwn College. I'm Jan and today we're going to be talking about uh, program misuse mitigations, right? So we've uh, dug into how programs are misused at a very high level uh, in this module and we're going to dig into that with the practice problems and even in the practice problems you will find certain cases where um, it feels like the developers are fighting against you to keep you from misusing the software. And that's, of course, intentional. In general, as developers identify more and more and more um, security issues with software, and when those security issues start um, coalescing into common themes, mitigations are developed to try to reduce the harm from um, a given security flaw. Um, we already saw this uh, in action in um, the hacking team hack that we discussed in the very, very introduction to the course. And you'll see this um, constantly throughout the rest of the class. We'll talk about a uh, class of security flaw and we'll talk about numerous mitigations that have been created to try to um, generally reduce harm, but not eliminate harm. Um, not because we don't want to eliminate harm, but because it's actually extremely difficult to do so, but try to reduce the impact of certain security flaws. All right, let's talk specifically about a mitigation that um, you will run into in the course of this module. Um, and that mitigation is uh, command injection through um, uh, basically uncareful handling of some programs um, of their arguments, right? So. Um, oftentimes, you are able to, as an attacker, inject a command into software, as you'll do um, in some of the levels of this module, um, and have it execute commands on your behalf. Right? This happens uh, depressingly um, uh, frequently. As of eight years ago, this was one of the top 10 most um, common security vulnerabilities, the OWASP top 10. Now it is still in the OWASP top 25 command injection. So it's, it's, it's uh, still a common vulnerability. Um, and uh, in the course of carrying out an attack against uh, utilizing this vulnerability, attackers will often cause commands to be executed with bin sh, right? Uh, when you execute something with bin sh, of course, uh, let's say, normally pre-mitigation, you'd be executing uh, them with whatever privileges the program that you're hijacking um, had. Um, and, and that's where this uh, meme comes in, right? Obviously, it's bad in both cases, uh, in whether the program was running as root or it wasn't running as root. Um, but it's very, very, very bad if the program is running as root. If the program runs as root and you can hijack it to um, or hij uh, do a command injection in some mishandling of input by this program that causes you to be able to run commands as root that's obviously brutalizing to security of the system. And so a mitigation was created that basically um, for modern uh, implementations of uh, command, uh, interpreter, uh, command interpreters or shells, if um, the shell is running as set UID, so if it's effective user ID, as we discussed in the previous lecture, um, is root, but its real user ID is not root, if it's kind of temporarily root, it will um, actually drop privileges back down to the real user ID for safety reasons, because almost always, let's say, or very frequently, this was a sign of a command injection being executed, exploited to uh, achieve privilege escalation on a machine. Of course, sometimes you do this intentionally. You have a set UID program that, that uses uh, OS or that uses system, uh, the system uh, command, uh, uh, libc function to execute some shell command. Um, you don't want the shell dropping privileges. Um, you would have to rewrite that to execute bin sh dash p instead of bin sh. Dash p is a flag that you can pass to the shell so that it won't drop privileges. But of course, passing that flag requires some more control than your average command injection actually gets you because in your average command injection, by the time that you are running in that command, you are no longer root because of this mitigation. All right, so um, 
if you are in the course of this uh, module trying to execute bin sh or bin bash, make sure to pass it the dash p flag. Anyways, um, uh, the shell is one example of kind of a program misuse uh, mitigation. I'm gonna do a, give you a more general example uh, before casting a wide eye toward the future. Um, the more slightly more general example is Wireshark. Wireshark um, is a network sniffer, a very popular one. It's a great piece of software historically. It's been a, a subject of some security problems, right? Why? Because Wireshark needs a lot of access. It needs to be able to sniff network traffic. Uh, that is not something that any old process can do. So typically people run Wireshark as root. Two, um, Wireshark tries to parse traffic as well as just capture it. And it provides a lot of very good analysis of this traffic um, of, of many, many, many different protocols. Like very many protocols. Um, all these protocol parsers can have security problems in themselves, right? And as a mitigation to prevent uh, security problems leading to attackers running uh, uh, code as root on the victim machine, um, as a mitigation here, the Wireshark developers put into two programs, one that records traffic and one that analyzes it, right? Actually more than two, but you know, we'll just simplify it. Um, so that's another kind of ad hoc mitigation, just so light like the BinSH one that, that um, was deployed to fight certain uh, classes of problems. Um, and uh, I'll mention a general mitigation and we'll actually study it much more in depth a couple of modules from now. Um, but a more general mitigation to program misuse is sandboxing. So you take the program and you actually wall it off from anything sensitive or from anything it doesn't need to have access to in its normal execution. And you try to make sure that even if the program is misused somehow, uh, harm is minimized. We'll explore this concept a lot several modules later in the sandboxing module. All right, so that was um, security mitigations. Hope that uh, kind of set the stage for the future of uh, of the course. We'll we'll talk about, like I said, mitigations in almost every module because almost all of these security problems have been thought of for uh, and fought for sometimes for decades. All right, good luck. <laughs>